Dear learners, welcome to my lecture on white collar crime. White collar crime is one of the important area which is covered under criminology. And as we know, white collar crime is an inevitable phenomena, you can say. So let us see what we have in this particular unit or particular topic. We're going to study white collar crime and its various types. Then we are going to study the consequences of white collar crime and the problem associated with white collar crime. So here in this particular section, we'll try to learn what are the negative effects of white collar crime and why it is so difficult to record white collar crime. Let us start with uh, the meaning of white collar crime. According to Edwin Sutherland, he defined white collar crime as crime committed by people of respectability and high social status during the course of their occupation. That means here white collar crime is committed by the people who have high status in the society and they are respected and they involve, they involve in white collar crime during their course of occupation. As we know that the so-called crimes like murder, rape, robbery, they are usually committed by poor family background, by the people from poor family background. Whereas what we have realized is white collar crime is committed by people who come from well-to-do background. We'll have some sort of discussion also in the, in the comment or in the chat box, right? Where we'll try to debate on whether white collar crime is dangerous than the street crimes. So here, white collar crime is committed by people of high social status and they are widely trusted and respected and they're also referred as crime in suits. White collar criminals, they are called as, or the crime is considered as crimes in suit. And it's also stated that street crimes, they are dangerous as compared to the white collar crime because the white collar crime is committed by people who are top executives and government officials. And it says that it is less harmful as far as the commitment of crime is concerned. So this point is debatable and we can debate on this. So we have types of white collar crime. So we got crime against the public. We have crime against the customers and crime against the companies. So first we'll start with crime against the public. So usually white collar crime, it have an adverse effect on general public. Let us take an example, like a large company disposing toxic waste. It affects the life of people living in the surrounding area. But usually such large company they avoid environmental friendly practices so that they can earn maximum profit. And here they avoid putting environmental friendly structures because these companies, they spend little money as possible on bribing the relevant authority such as the city councils. Then next we have crime against customers. Uh, it's quite interesting and uh, people, they are quite uh, ignorant or unaware regarding this type of crime, like crime against the customers. It includes dangerous foods 
unsafe or adulterated products and deceptive advertisement so not only the consumers or the customers they buy dangerous food or adulterated food and even the advertisement what we become across they are deceptive we have the best example here in the late 1960s there was a company called hormel company in america which used to take stale meat written by its retail or store customers and they used to repackage and resold the stale meat for higher profits here manufacturing company usually drive product quality controllers to get away with defective products so defective products are supplied in the market by bribing the product quality controllers then we have crime against the companies it includes shoplifting employee theft and embezzlement so these are quite familiar type of crimes and here shoplifting employee theft and embezzlement so here embezzlement is nothing but misappropriation of funds so usually uh, this particular crime is committed by middle class employees and usually the lower class people they steal for utilitarian reasons whereas the middle class they steal for selling reasons middle class thieves are usually respected we have already discussed this point and they have a logic they give a reason for stealing they steal from uh, the company or from the place they are employed and they say that or they regard their wages as not an approximation of value of their labor that means they steal because they receive very meager salary they receive very meager salary for their efforts so after uh, types of crimes we have consequence of white collar crime uh, here we have economic consequence social cost and physical cost we'll see one by one let us start with economic consequences here under economic consequences white collar crime it inflicts high financial cost and usually elderly and the poor they are victimized by consumer fraud here white collar crime it cost its victims far more than the lower deeper into the pocket than the wallet which wipes out lifetime savings so here white collar crime not only attacks the pocket of the victim but sometime it wipes out the lifetime savings of the victim financial losses are often tax deductible so the tax paying public must make up the lost revenue by paying higher taxes and consumers pay higher prices so whenever there is a financial loss because financial losses they are tax deductible that means if there is a financial loss it leads to increase in taxes it leads to increase in taxes that means the tax paying public must pay higher tax that is one even like the price of the commodities or the taxes on the commodities it increases here we have a lot of such examples like uh, hike in fuel prices domestic gas etc even the gst what we learn gst is nothing but uh, goods and service tax so not only the government levies tax on the luxurious goods it also levies taxes on the basic food items also like flour milk and other products which are used in day to day life so it has economic consequences than physical cost if you compare the 
white collar crime with street crimes, we realize that white collar crime is less visible. So we do not witness much, like we do not find it visible. We do not, it's less visible, we can say. So not only that, it's devastating effects are usually deferred. So as it is not visible, it is more dangerous, we can say. And the effect is also very devastating and deferred. Here we have the best example, like a builder supplier who sells material which not only comply with safety standards, may cause the consumer great physical harm such as collapse of the roof. That means the building material supplied by the supplier, if it is of low quality, if it is of low quality, it affects the consumers and it leads to physical loss also. Like a house constructed by using uh, inferior grade of uh, material, it may lead to collapse of roof. So collapse of roof is a small thing. Here we have seen, we have witnessed collapsing of dams and bridges also. We got social costs, social cost of uh, white collar crime. So white collar crime, it is most coercive and it tears our, a part of our moral fiber because those who are trusted and uh, and uh, honest, they prove to be untrustworthy and dishonest. And here, for better opportunities and decent life, the people, they are capable to take property of others. Here, we social audit, we see white collar crime as wrecking our social institutions. White collar crime, it challenges society's collective sentiments or the basis of social order. That means it affects or disturbs our social order and it also uh, have an impact on our sentiments, our collective sentiments. Then we have problem associated with white collar crime. We have already seen the, the types, right? and where it impacts. Now, finally, we will see problems associated with white collar crime. So it is very often to detect white collar crime. And these white collar criminals or white collar crime is a crime without victims. That means no one is a victim over here. That means both the parties involved in white collar crime. That means the one who is receiving the bribe and the one who is giving the bribe both are equally equally responsible for the act of crime so nobody is a victim over here because both have an arrangement to benefit each other so none of the party they try to report the offense that's why we say it's a crime without victims. For instance, when a victim is at public, is the public at large, such misrepresentation in advertising, advertising, few members of public have the expertise to realize that they are being misled. So sometimes innocent people or the public at large, they are misled because very few people have an expertise who realize uh, that they are being misled. And these white collar criminals, they are highly sophisticated and it is hard to collect evidence. So as there is no evidence against this white collar criminal, they are not convicted, they are not charged, there is no proceedings and there is no punishment at all. So they argue that they are not criminals. So white collar criminals, they say that they are not criminal because they have never been convicted or sentenced by the court of law. So in conclusion, uh, white collar crime is that those who engage themselves in white collar crime assumes that deviance and crime are the exclusive 
preserves of the underprivileged class. So these white collar criminals, they are in a position to blame the poor or the underprivileged to be blamed or to be named as a criminal. And the bottom line here is, if detected at all, if detected at all, white collar criminals are rarely prosecuted. That means to, to free oneself from the act of corruption or uh, conviction of corruption, one pays the corruption to get rid of uh, the prosecution, right? Now, before I wind up, let me just uh, quote Nelson Mandela here. He said that corruption is a disease, corruption is a disease and transparency is the treatment. Corruption is a disease, then transparency is a treatment. So with this, uh, I'm just winding up with my lecture. Uh, students can subscribe, like and share so that uh, they may receive my other lectures also. Thank you one and all.